Break It Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio, Bana Musadi, Duala, and Jungle Hawk, Boya. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Freaky Table. It's your girl, Joan Gumba. Kuo Ilonghe is joining me in the house. Yana isn't here, but sitting in for him, we have a very, very interesting and very handsome and talented um, teacher is in the building. I love teachers. I love. OK. <laughs> I love teachers. They make me better. Anyway, so we have a teacher in the building. His name is Elambo Neville, and he's from GBHS Daido in Douala. He's joining us on set today to talk about the treatment of teachers in private schools, especially here in Cameroon. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's so good to have some intelligence in the building. Okay, two so intelligent people in the house. Okay. My pleasure. <laughs> Hello, Gish. So how are you? As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I'm alive. Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't talking to a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good to have you here. Thank it's you. good. For so long, teaching like law, like like um, uh, medicine, medical doctors, uh, all of that have been held in. We, we all hold them in high esteem. Like they are, it's a prestigious career or profession. But in Cameroon, teaching seems like um, if you're a teacher, it's like that's the last it's job. <laughs> it's the last job, you know. It's like Otin don't Otin don't tire you. They go teachers training mm -hmm. and all of that, which is almost the same thing as nursing these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. And recently journalism. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it looks like po politicians will also be. <laughs> but how how would you assess you know the teaching profit, profession in Cameroon? Um, well. Uh, they always say that the teaching profession is a noble profession. Very, yeah. And uh, well, irrespective of everything that is happening with the teachers, I would still like to say that it is actually a noble profession. Um, well, assessing the teaching profession, I would say the, the private sector has made it a business mm -hmm. and uh, they have the, those, the stakeholders of the private sector, they have gone away from what is supposed to be the norm of education. They don't think about the, the, the education part of it. It's about the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but the, 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 the state, the government, still tries to uphold that education part of it. So assessing the teaching profession right now, it's something that is very enigmatic. Because there is a wide gap, the way the teacher of the state is treated, and the way the teacher in the private sector. So, so, so thank God you are in the state department. Mm -hmm. ah, thank God you. <laughs> no wonder you are still fresh. <laughs> no, because the way we see those other ones, let me do check your shoe. <laughs> because we have something with teachers than their shoes. Yeah, like, okay, that yeah, shoe, yeah, so that yeah. might not knock. <laughs> <Don't pee. laughs> you know, it, I, I mean, it's, it's always good to have young people teach, right? I have, I will tell you my experience. My mother was a teacher for a long time. She just retired. Um, and I, she used to I'd call me up when I'm on holidays to do, uh, to assist her in, in school, um, kindergarten. I will go there. It's nice, but it, I cannot teach. That's for sure. It's not, it's not my calling. Um, but when they bring young teachers for maybe from, uh, I don't know, the various schools that they bring, they bring them to, to teach, to train, like internship or something. My brother, I, I will teach better. Me, who is not a teacher, like I'm not a teacher, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trained for that. But they who have been trained, they are terrible. From the grammar situation to the way they treat the student. I mean, there was the like kindergarten, mm -hmm. like nursery school. Mm -hmm. So the way they treat those people, like, it's just, I, like, I wonder how long are you supposed to stay in a, in, in a, in a school institution or teaching training institution? School. Yeah, training for you to become a good teacher. Like, what else are they supposed to teach you besides the one that they write on the board? Well, um, actually, I, I think that the problem here is that uh, most of the teachers, they actually get the training, but... Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, yeah. They actually get the training, those who are trained to teach for the state. Yeah. But right now in the private sector, I don't think they get the training because, uh, it, it, like you said, 
everyone, when things are not going, the private schools are littered all over and yeah. I just write an application. But I wish I could say that the, the people who teach at private schools, especially mission schools, mm -hmm. um, they are not trained teachers? Yeah, most often they are not trained. Wow. Okay. So they are not trained. Interesting. Yeah. You know, there, there's a difference between the subject matter mm -hmm. and then the training. I'm um, an English teacher. There's a difference between knowing English and being trained as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I have a degree in English, I just run to go and teach English. There's a difference between that person who has a degree in English and has the training mm -hmm. and the person who just has that degree in English and is rushing to teach. Wow. So before I land, this guy lands, start asking you questions. Like, how do your students see you? Like, hot, sexy? Do they use that as, you know, a tool to understand what you're teaching them? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, they, they usually say that the guy is hot. I don't know about sexy, though, but they usually say I'm hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to believe that to an extent that helps. That because they are, they are looking forward, they always look forward for me to come mm. to class. Oh, hello, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, okay. Wait, wait, I mean, you are, I mean, one thing I love you for is, is your love for academy yes. and you want things to be done properly, Prop perfect, and all of that. But we're, we're discussing on, uh, you know, the state of the teaching profession in Cameroon mm -hmm. as at now. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that? Uh, it's deplorable, um, standards really, um, and I'm not talking about um, just, I mean, you've talked about training for the teachers, but I want to talk about even remuneration mm -hmm. for teachers, especially mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, we could talk about the conditions of which schools are and all of that and how um, the, the logistical elements are not there to even help teachers. To, to, to make it easier for the teaching and learning process, you know, just easy for them. So that, that is really a factor. But to, to imagine the condition. So I, I've never been to, to um, um, a, a day school, that's what it's called. Yeah? So I went to boarding school. My parents chose that I should go to boarding school. And um, so my experience with teachers that, in, in a way, were kind of like pseudo parents mm -hmm. to, to us, like second parents, really did most of the parenting <laughs> because, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, because we had to stay with them most of the time. And you see teachers waking up at 4 a.m. to to make sure that we, we, we wake up. Mm -hmm. And um, at least at, 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 at that time, we still felt that these teachers were not compensated enough. You know, those within the boarding schools were not compensated enough. In the last um, um, four years since the crisis, and I think you will know this better. The condition has moved from, from from bad to just deplorable. That if you take, for example, Catholic Catholic um, institution, church, and uh, mission, whatever, that the they've been consistent, and this is not unique to them, but consistent. Just take the Boya diocese; they are only teachers in all the schools. Six months salaries. What? Yes, yeah, so that salary was six months. And these salaries are continuously being slashed. Continuously. <laughs> Never mind that the teachers still have to do the same amount of work. work. They still have to wake up at 4 a.m. to make sure, unnecessarily, that children also wake up. They, they have to, they, they are still paid that. So, what the Cali Church has done, for example, is that before they used to have like a central pool where all school fees comes and then kind of redistributing the payment of fees, mm -hmm. uh, of, of salaries to teachers. Right now, they've, they've decentralized it where each school has to take care of, of payment, which means that some before are... then, um, schools, some schools had higher enrollment and they could, they, could, they could use these to redistribute and then, you know, like, just make everybody comfortable. Right now, if you have a school that has low um, um, enrollment. enrollment, it means teacher salaries will be slashed by by fifty percent, twenty five percent. You can imagine. You can imagine uh, the entry level of teachers in the Catholic mission is seventy five thousand francs mm -hmm. to 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 
as a teacher, in addition to the fact that they have to cut church contribution from that 35,000 first. I don't know why I'm contributing to the church, even from the salary that I earned. <laughs> you know, that's that's the tax, church contribution. So uh, by first time. Yes, yeah. and, and they don't, wow. you can imagine living under that. The teachers have been reduced to beggars. They do not have um, enough respect even from the students. Because imagine a student sees you, you look very shabby, you mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. put yourself together. The parents even can bully you. Yes. I'm, um, we've heard instances in, I think, I, I don't know whether this is CKC or if I call, where two students are fighting, and one picked up a knife, and in a form of de-escalating that, this master decided to beat up the student who, who was armed, mm -hmm. and he was sacked. Yeah. So you, they don't, you cannot even pull your weight because of the fact that you are and it, it seems like they are they are continuously disempowered mm -hmm. in order that they cannot stand still in this um, boya diocese they don't have like the teachers Catholic teachers training i'm using the Catholic church as a case study but mm -hmm. it's, it's generally it can be said of all they don't have a, a Catholic teacher. it was actually disbanded the way the way, way Upsu was yeah. disbanded in Lubi. like you disband a trade union for teachers because this was not the need for the soft in order that they cannot because if you have a trade to, uh, um, union they, they can they can have their collective um, uh, um, complaints and demands yeah. that can be channeled yeah. they can have strikes and all of that because they can speak in one voice mm -hmm. that was disbanded and in doing that then that's divine and they cannot really come together and and really do something. In a school like Ripper Call, the teachers would have been done some extra activity that could give them money. Say, um, board eggs and pepper. Mm -hmm. Do you know, it's interesting to know that the school has monopoly over boiling eggs. Like boiling the eggs and sell <laughs> And pepper. So they, they, they have that. Teachers do not even have the opportunity to even diversify like that. I, what is wrong? She says like, <laughs> as, I mean, something as basic as that. I, 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 I really do not. I was speaking with the teacher this morning um, just to understand where she stands with this whole thing and the treatment. She gave me like an insight of what's really going on. And she told me like, I mean, the pay salary is like 25000 per month to 45000 per month. Or even, as you just mentioned now, 75,000. Then I'm looking at the teacher in a mission school who has that's, that's three kids. That's 75,000 without mm -hmm. it. Three kids, so, yeah. you have to raise three kids whom you're looking at the school where you are, you're like, okay, maybe this child can come to this school where the, the school fees definitely is higher than yeah. your salary. Yeah. So you have a wife. If I told you're a man, you have a wife, you have three kids, you still have in-laws, your family for 25,000. And you are restricting you from you selling chips and boiled eggs and all of these yeah. kind of things. Perfect. Like, how do you cope in that kind of situation? Let me ask you, how do you cope in that kind of situation when you're being deprived to really make extra money? Yeah. You know, um, I'll just say that there are times because I'm a government teacher, but I do take a lot of part time in private schools. So there are times when I try to want to put myself in their mm -hmm. shoes, mm -hmm. my colleagues in who are in the private institutions. Mm -hmm. And I try to take my eyes away from everything that the government gives me and see if I can succeed without, with, the, government. without the government. And it's difficult. You cannot cope. Imagine, that's the only professional way you can succeed. You're the government that has become suddenly wonderful. You cannot cope. I mean, and then the, 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 the most annoying thing in all of this is that sometimes with the twenty five to 50,000, you try to condition your mind mm -hmm. to accept, but still it doesn't come on time or yeah. doesn't come at all for about three to six months. Okay, without, without a, a teacher's um, trade union, or an association or something, and with this kind of treatment, how do the teachers actually rejoice? So, so that's where there is a problem. And that, that, that is what something has to be done about with immediate effects because there is nothing they can do. And you know, I, one of my principals told me once that if you don't want it, you go. There are some people who can teach for less. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He told me I, to my face yeah. that you don't want it, you can go. So any complaint, because there is no trade union, there, there, there is no body that, that can help address the issue. Mm -hmm. So, well, you, you, are, you, are, you are just saddled with the situation and you have no other option than to be there yes. waiting, waiting. You know, there, sometimes I have worked in a school where they, have, they are owing, this is a third month now, they have not paid. And uh, I was just talking to a colleague and he told me that, 
well, if, if they even call and be the three months, maybe one can do something. And I said, they will not. That happens, they are on you for three months. And even when maybe you have talked and talked, they want to pay, they'll pay one. Mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't pay you three. Maybe you can start a business. Mm -hmm. So they'll not pay you the three like, months. On, on need, what, what's the underneath um, 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 strategy here? That teachers should not grow above a certain level? Really? Yeah. What is it? It is. It's, it's more than this slavery. See, you... you and, and perhaps, you know, people talk about folly standards in education. Schools are hemorrhaging teachers. Yes. Because the good hey. teachers are leaving and looking for alternative pastures, okay. avenues. Mm -hmm. Most of my teachers were in Sassi, and I don't know whether this was, this is, uh, there is a direct link between um, bad payment and them leaving. But most of them whom I would consider were good teachers are no longer um, teaching there, most of them have gone and really gotten good jobs. Mm -hmm. But then, so unemployment, left... unemployment is, is 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 a scourge in this country, mm -hmm. and teaching is, is like a it's like a backup plan. Wow! So people are always ready to mm -hmm. do the dirty job. The dirty job. Yeah. So even uh, sometimes for less. But isn't that the reason? Is that, should we consider that as the reason why they are being paid less? Because most people are actually complaining about the standard of teaching mm -hmm. um, these days. So if you, if even with your degree, your first degree, or I don't know whatever, yeah. you know, whatever training that you have, and then you come, and then you're teaching my child, my child is not improving, nothing is happening. In fact, you come once, maybe twice a week, and for private classes and all of that, the child is not improving. The child is speaking more bad grammar. Like the child is even worse than <laughs> when you started. Like, do you, would the parents be encouraged to even add money to this teacher? who is doing clearly a bad job? Well, um, I, I, I really would say that the, that, that aspect of the bad job is on the teacher. Uh, but we talked about training, and mm -hmm. I mentioned here that there are quite a good number of teachers in the yes. private sections uh, who are not trained. But when we really talk about the training, it's not something that is too much with seminars and even you as the teacher you try to get one or two things you you, you can get there and become a good teacher even if you have not had that training please define yeah. us who is a good teacher you have to know your subject matter <laughs> you have to know your subject matter and then there are some other values like uh being patient mm. yeah being patient and understanding try to understand the psychology of a child, of, of a student. If, if you do not, if you don't, if you don't learn how to wrap your hand around child and student psychology generally, it, it will be very difficult for you. Because sometimes the, the students usually make you feel like you're gonna explode. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the teacher who has not had that training, who can be termed a bad teacher, is the one who will just act on the emotions immediately. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you have to look. There are times when you, for me, sometimes I, I usually just pile up. I, I will be talking and uh, maybe you're doing whatever it is you're doing there. Sometimes I even use a, something like a joke to get you, you back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so they, they, they usually call me that black child because I'm always, when you, I'll say, hey, you that black child, if I come there, I'll make your face to be white. Everybody will laugh and then you get back to it. I, I don't necessarily need to use be brutal about mm -hmm. it, yeah. But, and, and also, as a good teacher, you need to know, you will not use the same method for every situation. Mm -hmm. So you need to know how to, to, to go around a situation that is in front of you. When you have a, a, a brutal child, like I always have, my, my colleagues usually wonder how I deal with the students in school who are considered as the weed smokers, the weapon and all of that, but they're always still around me. Oh, sir, probably because I look like someone who smokes weed. You know, <laughs> but, but you, you spoke about something now, the word brutal. Um, mm -hmm. for, for, I mean, there was a period in Cameroon where teachers were, I mean, teachers were being killed by students mm -hmm. accidentally or intentionally. I don't know which one. How do we, how do we handle those kind of situations? A teacher, a teacher and a student will quarrel, and the next minute the child is removing a knife and stabbing the teacher to death. And the, the institution perhaps doesn't even do until there's a cry out, outcry from social media or the public before the, the, the school is making sure that the child is being apprehended or there was a, there's supposed to be an investigation. Uh, I, 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 let me, I dare the to say... The protection of teachers, mm -hmm. like, um, how safe are they? 
the, 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 the government, let me put it that way, because some of those laws are coming from the ministry mm -hmm. about you know, banning corporal punishment. Not. So I usually always tell my colleagues that I think that the, 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 the government does not balance sometimes the laws that they, they make. Well, they may have heard or try, gotten uh, uh, words about how some teachers brutalize students and they are trying to... To, to, to put the students in a place where they are protected. Mm -hmm. And then they overdo it now and forget about the protection of the teacher. The student knows that it is said that a teacher is not supposed to touch me. And he does not know what, how the teacher is protected. So he feels that he has monopoly over everything because, you know, they usually tell us that for no reason should you send a child out of class, for no reason at all. That's a warning. If you come as a new teacher, they tell you that you don't send a child. And the child knows that. So he can do anything. You're not supposed to beat him. You're not supposed to send him out. At the end of the day, you don't know what you, 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 you how you, how you, how, yes. Out. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you can walk out of the class. Maybe you can walk out of the class. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I think this, this brutality of students mm -hmm. ha has arisen from the fact that the students know that there is too much protection on them to the detriment of the teacher. Mm -hmm. So they feel that they can do just anything and get away with it. Because I remember that when we were in school, the teacher is always right. Mm. If they take a case, even if you really feel that, you no, know, this teacher, but in front of the principal and the discipline master, the teacher is always right. But here you have situations where sometimes the, the discipline master dares to, to, to reprimand you in front of a student. I really think, I have a strong conviction that that violence is coming from there. It's coming from the fact that they, the students feel that they are overprotected. And then they, they, they don't see that same protection given to the teacher. Okay. So now for the teacher, it's just you come to class, you teach whatever it is they are doing. And that has also contributed to the deteriorating nature of uh, education because now the teachers do not want to bother yeah. about whether you get it or not. And so, so I think that, well, I'll use this opportunity if anybody, the stakeholders, the power that be, can hear me, they should revise that, those laws. Those laws. Mm -hmm. They should revise them. But they're overcrowding at schools, especially government schools. You have yes. government schools, even private schools. They're overcrowding. Does it also contribute? Because I cannot have like, when you see the Western world, you have less students in class. The teacher's timetable is very flexible and he, he or she can commit him or like him or herself to the students mm -hmm. and whatever they are doing. But here we have like, 200 students in one class yeah. for a young, like somebody like you, you're young, you have the other things that you're doing in life and the salary is also low. You have to do all that other stuff and you have 200 kids in one class. How do you deal with that? Yeah, actually that overcrowding is also a problem. Yeah, the overcrowding is a big problem, especially now with the competence-based approach. That system, sometimes I don't know, if I had an opportunity to talk to the minister, Madame Malova, I would tell her that you people should do something about this CBA because you don't expect me to be able to tell how far a student has understood. And in 50 minutes, I'm dealing with 100 and something students. How do you even tell how 100 and something students have grasped a lesson? Because you need to have just a few, about 20, to be able to check them one after the other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if you give an assignment, like I'll always check assignments when I come before the lesson. But there are times when I will not want to check because 50 minutes, you take already about 30 to check whether everybody has done the assignment and you're not able to meet up with the program for the day and that's how you procrastinate and at the end of the year, you have not met up and the students need to go to the, the next yeah. class. And when they get to the GC class, you discover that we've been piling up, piling up and at the end of the five years, you started doing that in form one, they are not checking the assignments because you are scared of not wasting too much time. But the CBA, tells you that you have to check 
the assignment. And before the end, even when you're signing the kind of text, they'll say that you have to write the uh, expected outcome. By the end of this lesson, the students have to understand. How do you even know 100 students understand by the end of this lesson? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's difficult, very, very difficult for that CBA, the, the competence-based approach. So I, I think that, well, what I'm suggesting here is that the government should look into the situation and be creating, maybe creating more schools because I, and now that's the only option that I can think of because the schools, all the schools are crowded. It's not as if there is 100 and something somewhere and then there is an empty exactly. class here. So all the, students, all the schools are crowded. So maybe there should be that extension. And then I'll just use this opportunity too to say that there are some facilities that we need for the CBA to work, but we don't have them. Because you, you, you cannot, I, I have to do practical lessons in a class of about 150 students. Then I should need a projector yes. to project some things, but our classes, even there's no ceiling. And then they, they just the heat alone can make you, you lose your mind and you start talking rubbish in front of the students. <laughs> mental health is real. <laughs> Check your mental health. It's actually real. And then... <laughs> The, in, in the case of the private school, the salary issue worsens everything yeah. because the teachers are not paid well. And when they accept the not well payment, it doesn't even come on time. So sometimes you don't even know why you are going to school. Nothing, and motivates, nothing you. motivates you. Okay, just imagine that I've just spoken about uh, being owed three months salary in one of my uh, part-time schools. And then we're about writing the GCE. The students were calling me, please say, we need some revision. What, what, what is motivating you to go for that revision? Sometimes as a father, you just say that, well, maybe one of these students can see me tomorrow with their cars and they will remember something that pushes you mm -hmm. to go. But if you have to think about the, 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 the conditions, you, you, will, you will definitely. Then, oh, that just go and teach more you. <laughs> 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 you wrong information. But would you be held, would you be held responsible if all, like you have like zero percent in, in a course at the GC? Well, you, the, 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 the teacher, the teacher is held responsible to an extent. But when you have one hundred percent, nobody appreciates you. Right. That's the problem. Yeah, when there is zero percent, the teacher did not teach well. When there's one hundred percent, nobody even gives you a handshake. That yeah, the, school the, the, the school takes the glory and they forget the teacher. So I think that some of these things account for the deteriorating nature of the educational system generally. And well, I should say that the government to an extent, you know, we still have problems in the, in the government, the, the, the state, the government sector, let me put it that way, but they, 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 are, they are doing uh, way better than, I mean, like, I'll, I'll just say that I take 10 hours in my main school, that's 10 hours a week. And then I go to a private school and teach 24 hours. And what the government is paying me is like quadruple, is that how they call it? Mm -hmm. What they are paying me in the private school. school. And it doesn't even come. Then you wonder, so, so, so these, these private teachers, they work so hard mm -hmm. and then they are working under pressure, but there is nothing. That, that motivates. So why do we keep doing it? You know, I always ask this question in like, like in a marriage. It's an abusive like, relationship. Why, yeah, like it's, why are you why are you still there? It's an, like, it's an abusive relationship. I, I would imagine that if you're in an abusive relationship, you should leave. But the, 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 the cycle is even vicious to get new partners. That's a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, there is no way to leave because I, I I don't know. There is something I don't know. It's as if. We, we talked about, uh, is it um, maybe an association? Mm -hmm. uh, there, should, there should be some kind of a syndicate, a trade union for teachers. Because it seems to me like the proprietors, oh, yeah. they, yeah, have yeah. Their, they have their trade union, something. I think the proprietors have a me. I don't know about have an, association. have an association. I think so, because mm -hmm. when you go to all the private schools, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same. I mean, the way they are treating you. Sometimes you may be crying and you go to the next, you discover that where you are coming it's from is even better. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that uh, in, instead of leaving, you don't have anywhere to go to. Maybe the teacher should come together and just think of... I just add something to what you, you said um, about... Um, the the, the, the the brutality that has been taking place in schools and the attack on severely teachers. It's also attack on other students, which which means that if a student can get into school with an arm, 
then it's a mix to everybody in school. It's mm -hmm. just yeah. teachers, mm -hmm. but also to, and we've seen other students being hurt or killed. Um, so um, to me, I think first that um, schools need to be for security measures mm -hmm. to make sure it's, it's, it, it cannot end at that, but as a start to make sure that um, weapons really do not get, of course, students can always improvise ways of creating weapons, but at least at the minimum, do that. Second, I think that um, schools should do a little bit more of psychosocial counseling. Counseling, good. For mm -hmm. the kids, especially um, 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 some of the kids come from backgrounds which are really dysfunctional, and they, they come they to, that out to, to, to school with, with all the remnants of what they've got from dysfunctional families to, to school, and teachers and other students might be affected, mm -hmm. usually are affected by that type of thing. So if you have these services that help to, or try to help these, these students to adjust mm -hmm. better in their environment, I think that's, uh, that, that's a way to go about it. Right, but I, uh, school should also, uh, I think that it should also work with agencies. You have a security agency be in charge of security. Yeah. And you have mm -hmm. this, so they should work with it because if they put all the load on them, on it's them, they try principal, principals and the teachers, they cannot do that job. Panche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big shout out, big shout out to all our teachers, man. It's not, it's not an easy job. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at you now, I'm like a young man teaching and all of that. I can imagine the pressure that is there. It's even to older people who have kids and families and still earn that kind of salaries. I mean, yeah. even, even, I mean, scammers earn more money. Than yeah, of course, of course. And I, I, I really want to recommend that the, the government should look into the issue. Into because private schools? Into, into the private, private schools, sector. the way they pay their teachers. Their teachers. Yes. The government should look into the issue. Should start closing down some of these schools. Because contribution should not be a task. It should yes. not be a task. Yes. Should Why should teachers be contributing? People, people should not be under pressure. I mean, if, you, if, you, if teachers can pay church contribution, they should be able to also be paid do... It's then fundraising from the church to pay teachers. To pay teachers, good. But yeah. we're not allowed. I don't say it's separate, but mm -hmm. but they, they think that but it's they're fine money to, to collect money. No, that they should go to churches and, and 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 first of all, this is supposed to be a business. You see, they, they, something happened. To, I think to a bird, or something happened to it. And every time this thing happens, the 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 the, the, the ex students or alumni have to contribute money for repairs and reconstruction. And also, you're running a business. Yes. This is a business. The fact that you have, you know, students who have gone there and who are, does not mean that it's their responsibility to come and fix a business that you're running and making a profit from. Yeah. People have been, have been um, um, decent, that's our program, the way the church always does. Yeah, nobody's so holding them responsible. That it is other people's responsibility to take care of their sheep in the process they are making money. Mm -hmm. they, should, they, they should pay teachers better. They should pay teachers better. Yeah, should and pay teachers should form the syndicate. They should form their syndicate. Yeah, should, syndicate you, you should, yeah, should, you know, should go on strike. They because should this, go on this strike. Doesn't happen. Stop, this stop doesn't happen. Until they, can, they, can, they can pay them because it's, it's very abusive. It's an abusive relationship. It's very, if they're very not abusive. paying their priest, the priest would have been teaching hell. <laughs> <laughs> there you get it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, how did your teachers call you? Uh, your students call you, Mr. Black Man. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and shout out to all the students. Uh, and and um, big, big shout out to all. And really, we are encouraging our teachers. Please, I know that this job is hard. But without you, we are nothing. We are nothing. And we depend on you for knowledge. So please, if that association can come up, you can fight for your rights. That would be nice. I hope that when they protest like teachers back in 2016, we will not have another crisis. Oh, yeah. Just saying. Um, so that thank you. Trade union, <laughs> thank you very much for coming. It's my pleasure. Longish, thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please, the discussion continues. Tell us if you've gone, if you're a teacher, tell us your experience, um, especially private school teachers. Please tell us your experience. We are waiting for you, your comments right down there in the comment section. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's Decoded TV Studios, as well as follow us on all social media platforms at Freaky Table. It's John Gumba, Kuo, and Mr. Elambo. It's a goodbye. Freaky Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio, Bona Musadi, Duala, and Jungle Hall, Boya. Jungle Studios, which is located at Solidarity Junction, Boya, for all your photography and we videography. Thanks.
thanks for watching the dopest TV show right now. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can continue seeing our beautiful faces. Scratch that, my handsome face. <laughs> All right, guys, and to never miss a thing, follow us on all social media platforms at Freaky Table, Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, stay tuned.